Hello everyone, in this video we are once again looking at another example uh, of a drawing the shear force and bending moment diagrams uh, on a beam that has a point load, a concentrated moment and a uniformly distributed load with uh, two supports, a roller support and a pin support and uh, it is specifically a statically determined beam. Now, if you have not gotten what a singularity functions mean, please check in the description of this video. You are going to have the introduction, the video that introduces you to singularity functions and what they are and how can they be used. Then you look at several other examples. Uh, finally, you can also look at the other examples uh, in uh, other videos that I'm going to share and uh, solving similar or related problems using method of sections. You can realize at the end of the day uh, the method of sections and other methods apart from the singularity functions are a bit tedious and time consuming whereas the singularity functions method is simpler as long as you understand. So in this video we are specifically going to look at how we can write down the singularity function and the for shear force and bending moment diagrams uh, shear force and bending moment equations later on we use them to calculate for the shear force and bending moment at any point along the beam which we can later on utilize to draw the shear force and bending moment diagrams at a later stage we will see how we can implement these singularity functions in MATLAB. So uh, let's go. This is our beam and with the uniform distributed load here with a 400 Newton acting at a, a 60 degrees to the horizontal. Then we have uh, a concentrated moment at the end of the beam where we have a roller support. So first of all, as I said, you need to draw the free body diagram indicate the axis y and x indicating the origin this is the origin k after indicating the origin ensure that if you have uniformly distributed load of course having determined the reactions at the supports then you redraw the free body diagram and then be able to to consider the singularity functions where you have uniform distributed load you have to make sure that if you put or you create a section somewhere, that section covers covers also the informal distributed load right away from the origin. In other words, what am I meaning? That if I have the informal distributed load starting from A to this point and I have to create a section somewhere there, then I have to add or to add more of this informal distributed load of the same intensity. If I put it here, then I have to also put it facing upwards down here so that the effect of this that I've put is cancelled out by this. Now, applying equilibrium conditions, I've found out that uh, AX is equal to 200 newtons. I have found out that uh, BY is 365 newtons and AY is 302 newtons. So this one is 302 newtons this is 365 newtons so just applying equilibrium conditions uh sum of forces in the vertical direction forces in the horizontal direction taking moments all the three equations should be able to give you the unknown reactions at the supports for a statically determinate beam now let us look at the, the shear force and bending moment singularity functions. For the shear force, we see we have a, a force here due to the reaction at, at A, at the pin support at A, uh, it is uh, at zero meters from the origin. So the line of the, the origin itself is along the line of action of AY or 302 newtons so if i'm writing the singularity function it will therefore be 302 uh, into x minus 0 to power 0 since it is a shear force uh-huh then minus 400 sine 60 because we are trying to resolve this force vertically 
and where does it act? It acts at the distance equivalent to 6 meters from, from uh, O. So what will it be? It will be uh, x, it will be 4 sine 60 into x minus 6 power 0. Then minus the, the load due to this uniform distributed the load, it will be 80 into x minus 0 because that uniform distributed load covers the span from the origin O to where we have put our section. Then plus 80 into x minus 4. Where does this one start from? It starts at x is equal to 4. And uh, at what distance is it from the section created? It will be from here to there and that will be x because x is greater than 4. So I mean greater than these distances here. So it will be x minus 4. Uh -huh. Then plus, plus, okay, it's a minus, minus. Okay, this should be a plus because we are considering upward forces to be positive. Okay, now that is the shear force equation. If I want the shear force at any point, x is equal to, for example, 2, mm, I have V of 2, and this will be uh, 3, 0, 2, this will be 0, this will be 0 at anywhere. If I substituted in the value of x and that uh, answer would give me a negative, we let all of those vanish or go to zero. So we have x minus zero here, so it will be minus 80 into, into 2. So what does this mean? I'll have 302 minus, uh, minus what? Minus 160. What does this give us? This should give us something like minus, okay, it should be plus 142. So if I go to my diagram, the shear force diagram, I look at x is equal to 2. x equal to 2, you see, I have something equivalent to, equivalent to 16k. So now, if I want to draw the shear force diagram, even now I'm, I'm picking that value because I already have the shear force diagram, but what if I want to draw? I'll only use, the, of course, I'll put in the values at x is equal to zero. I put in my zero. Um, I'll find that I'll have L square as zero, then I'll have this as 302. So I'll start from 302. Uh -huh, I move x is equal to 2 maybe up to, for example, uh, when I look at uh, this diagram, I see the uniform distributed load ends at somewhere x is equal to 4 meters. So, but uh, I always know that uh, the shear force diagram is going to give me a straight line. So I can only determine the point uh, where x is equal to 0 and at x is equal to 4. Then after, I just join the two points because I know this is going to be a straight line. And uh, what if uh, I'm drawing the bending moment diagram? Now, the bending moment diagram, I know here it is going to be parabolic. It's going to be parabolic, uh, opening towards the y direction. So it will be a curve, a parabola, but opening towards the y direction. So what happens? is that I only need to know the first and the last point, then press the maximum. Then I can curve, I can draw that curve. Then I move and check at these points. I have uh, another uh, something happening at x is equal to 6. So we have a point load and it will cause a jump. It will cause a jump on the shear force diagram at x is equal to 6 and later on it comes to 0 at x is equal to at x is equal to 8 what i'm meaning is that this diagram would come back at 0 mm -hmm. then when i go to the bending moment diagram at x is equal to i say the from here it is going to be a parabolic road or a parabolic graph then uh, after reaching at x is equal to x is equal to 4 then i also determine the bending moment at x is equal to 4 
I will put in this equation here x is equal to 4 where there is x I put 4 but where this function becomes negative I just cancel out of that I equate it to 0 this one will hold uh, this one will not hold this will not hold this will become 0 and it will cancel uh, this figure here so I will use if I want m if I want m of 4 then this will be 3 0 2 into 4 then uh, this becomes 0 minus 0 then minus 8 out of 2 into 4 squared then I come here this becomes 0 ah minus 0 minus 0 plus 0 so what would that be so i continue and uh, compute it and this would be in newton meter so i come here and uh, plot it on the graph at x is equal to 4 then i continue up to uh, the end of the beam i see at the end of the beam i have 200 newton meter a uh, concentrated moment this is going to cause a jump what we call a jump on the bending moment diagram so causes a jump and it comes back at zero so it should always start from zero and end at zero even the shear force diagram should start from zero and should end at zero now using MATLAB I was able to draw these uh, diagrams and I was able to determine the maximum bending moment which is uh, 570 it should be 570 uh, not kilonewtons but newton meter and it will act at x equal to 3.775 meters how do i determine that i only need to know where the maximum value occur so i will be when i see that is for example less than four i go to i go to where i have less than the functions that are giving me values less than four so i will take for example this this equation i'm saying i'm taking x values less than four where the function of bending moment uh for x less than four this will be 302x mm -hmm. then minus minus 80 out of 2x squared so if i differentiate uh, this is the bending moment equation so if i differentiate i get the m the x and i equate it to zero then i should get the value of x so the value of x here will be equal to 302 out of 80 which gives us approximately 3.775 3, 3 meters and if i substitute it in this equation then it would give me 570 newton meter so thank you so much this is how we can implement the singularity function method of uh, getting one the shear force equation then integrating it to get the bending moment equation because here after writing the shear force equation i can only always integrate and uh, be able to get the bending moment equation thank you so much see you in the next lecture